so there are two easy ways to get to three easy ways to get to Google Classroom. So if you're using a district managed device, when you open it up, the first tab that opens is that Clever page. So Clever is a single sign-on app. Um, it sort of just becomes a home page where all links can be housed so that kids can click on things really easily. I know teachers who are using Clever and are really um, loving it just to sort of keep things as bookmarks. The other two ways that we suggest that people log into Google Classroom is by just starting on any Google page and clicking on the waffle. Um, when you click on the waffle, Google Classroom appears there. And then the other way that you can do it is by typing classroom.google.com. So any Google app, you can click uh, the name of the app.google.com and get there. So let's navigate over to Google Classroom. So when you're on the Google Classroom home screen, you'll be able to see a tile like this one for every classroom that you are either a student in or a teacher of. So if a principal invites you to a classroom or um, a department head or the instructional coach invites you to a Google Classroom, you'll see the tile for that there, even if you are quote unquote a student in that classroom. Um, and you'll also be able to see any classroom that you've created. So to either join a classroom or to create a classroom, in the upper right corner near your avatar, you see a plus sign. So if you click on the plus sign, it gives you an option to join a class or create a class. If for some strange reason um, you are an instructor in the district and you don't see create a class, you can reach out to me or one of the other coaches um, one of the other ed tech coaches, um, and we can make sure that you have the ability to create a class. So in this case, I'm going to click create class because we want to get started in Google Classroom. And I'm going to call this uh, webinar sample class. Google requires that you give every classroom a name. So some teachers name it. Um, you know, like Mr. Smith's class or um, geometry period two class. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you name it as long as you and the other people using it know what it is. You don't need to put the section, the subject or the room, but sometimes people put more identifying information here. So when you click create, it actually takes a minute or two to create. sort of getting everything ready. And then it gives you sort of little um, pop-ups that give you some overview. So if you keep clicking next, it'll give you like a little mini tour, which we're gonna do together today. So when you create a classroom, it automatically assigns a theme, meaning the color and the design. So you can change that right away. It's my favorite part is picking the design of the classroom. So this seems to be a golf theme, which may or may not be um, useful unless you might be the golf coach or something like that. So right here, you're gonna click select theme. And then you can select, um, there's themes by topic here. So if you wanted it to be something related to visual arts or culinary arts or something like that or dance class. Um, so we'll go ahead and pick this music theme and then say select class theme. And it takes a second to change that over. If you have any questions about that so far, or there's any um, technical difficulties, please feel free to click on the chat and just make sure it says um, host and everyone um, so that we can all see what you want to ask. So now if I click on the three lines menu over here, some people call this um, the hamburger menu because it looks like a hamburger. Um, so if you click on that and you click on classes, it takes you back to that home screen. So you can now see that I have two classes. 
if you click on that hamburger menu, you can also see all of the classes in a list here. You can see your archived classes. So sometimes if I do a PD, um, once that PD ends, I might archive that class, but I like that it stays in that list of archived classes because I can go back and find things. Um, so I typically don't delete classes permanently. I just archive them so I can get back to them. So if I go here to this home page, I can now click on this sample class and now I'm in that particular classroom that I created. So from the home screen, it always tells you the name of the class. And then there's four main tabs that are um, useful to people. So the first tab is the stream. The stream is the default tab. That's the one that's on anytime you open the class. I describe the stream to people as sort of like the Facebook of Google Classroom. What it does is it just kind of makes um, a chronological list of events and announcements as they happen in classroom. So I don't find the stream um, very useful often unless there's a sp specific announcement that I want to send out that doesn't have an, like an assignment attached to it. So I can show you um, an example of an of a announcement in a few minutes. The next tab is the classwork tab. The classwork tab is where all really the work gets done. That's like where the bulk of postings go and where students and teachers can communicate with each other. Um, teachers can distribute work for students to do. Students can uh, submit work. So the classwork tab becomes kind of the, the, the bulk of the, um, where the bulk of the work is done. The people tab shows you who the teachers of the classroom are and who the students of the classroom are. Because we're um, a Google um, for Education district, can have up to 20 teachers in a classroom. So this might be useful, let's say, if you were doing like a book study with a group of teachers or you were working collaboratively with a group of teachers on a project and you wanted everybody to have equal share. A lot of teachers who work on teams, like maybe the sixth grade team, um, so that would be the teachers, the instructional assistants, perhaps the inclusion teacher, the ELL teacher, they may all want to be teachers in one classroom. And then the last tab is the grades tab. So um, we can take a look at what that will look like once you add an assignment. The grades tab is new. Google just added a grade book recently. So please feel free to stop me if you have any questions. All right. So the best place to start is with people. Um, there's not much you can do until you add uh, people. So right now the teacher is listed as trainer one. So I'm using a trainer account to create this classroom. So there are two ways that students can be added to the classroom. Students can navigate to classroom.google.com, click on that plus to join a class, and then enter this code. So if students click plus and join class and they enter that code, they've joined the class. You can also invite students. So I'm going to go ahead and invite myself and then navigate over to um, that screen to show you what that looks like. So I'm going to invite myself. I could also have copied um, that code and I'll show you where that code lives. Um, I just got an email from myself. Um, the gear wheel up here is always your settings. So if you click on the gear wheel, the class code is always in there. So if you ever need to find it again. Um, typically when I was teaching, I would have all students join the class at once. And then um, of course, 
we would get new students from time to time so I could go into the settings, find the code, help them navigate to Google Classroom, click the plus and join the class. So I'm going to switch over to Classroom and I need to switch um, what I'm sharing with you. Here we go. Perfect. So from my Worcester Schools account, my Cahill L account, you can see I am either a student in or a teacher of a lot of classrooms because I use it for PD quite a bit. Um, and I'm also helping a lot of teachers set up their classrooms so they share them with me either as a student or a teacher. So here's our webinar sample class, and it looks like I've been invited, so I'm gonna click join. So this is now, I added myself as a student, so this now is what it would look like from the student view. So I can see the stream as a student, I can see the classwork, I can see the people, but I can't see the grade tab. So I would not be able to see <clears throat> um, the grade book, obviously, as a student. So I'm just taking a pause in case you have any questions. So now I'm back in the teacher view, and I want to show you what it looks like from a teacher view and what it looks like from the student view. So I'm here in the stream, and remember that the stream is like the default um, page when you first open a classroom. And stream is really just for announcements, and it alerts people when something has happened in the classroom. So let's start with an announcement. And if it's the first time you've set up a class, it'll, it'll always ask you, um, it gives you little tips. So I'm going to say, welcome to our classroom. Please tell me one interesting thing about yourself. So when I post, I have an option to post to one or more classes. So this is pretty handy. Let's say that I'm teaching four sections of a class and we're going on a field trip and I want to remind students to bring their permission slip in the next day. I could push this message out to all four of the classes at the same time. So it's a huge time saver. I can also select which students I want to share this with, either all students or I could select one or more students here. So let's say I have to just remind a small group of students about something, um, or maybe just one student, I can send that out that way. That student would be the only student to see that message. The other nice thing about um, messages is I can attach something to it. So I can attach um, something from the computer, so something that's downloaded by clicking on the uh, paperclip. I could attach something from the Google Drive. I could attach a video from YouTube. I could attach um, a link to a website. So let's say that um, I wanted to attach a permission slip or something that I had in Google Drive. I could click on this particular thing and say add and then the students would have access to that. I don't need to attach anything to this. I can just click post, or I could click the little shark's tooth menu here, and I could decide to schedule this for a later date. So maybe I'm doing all of my posting on, uh, when I was a teacher, I used to use Google Classroom for my bell work every day. I would write those bell work questions on Sunday, and I would schedule them to post out in the morning each day. That way, um, I didn't have to rush around and think about it that morning. I could also save this as a draft. So if I start this and I'm not sure what else I want to say, I could save it as a draft and come back to it. But in this case, I'm going to click post. I'm going to post. 
So now I'm going to just click over to my other screen here and I'm going to refresh it because this is live. So I wanted to make sure I could see it. So now I'm in the stream and I can see that the teacher trainer one says, welcome to our classroom. Please tell me one interesting thing about yourself. And then it prompts me to add a class comment. So on an announcement, all comments would be viewable to the public. So I could say, hello, uh, before I was a tech coach, I taught art for 20 years. I don't know if anybody else would find that interesting, but um, you know, this is how students can create some sort of dialogue in the classroom. And then I could post that. So I could then comment on somebody else's comment. Somebody could comment on my comment. Um, I used to use this feature for bell work quite often because then students would start a conversation below. And I'm going to be honest, you know, people often ask and say, well, don't they sometimes say something inappropriate? Kids are kids, right? Kids do, um, they make bad choices. It's just sort of what kids do sometimes. So I used to say to kids, you know, I'm going to remind you that everything you put here is there forever. So it's on the internet. We can go back. We can find it. I can see who wrote it. Um, so just keep in mind that, you know, you're using the type of communication that you're expected to use when you're in school. Um, so typically, you know, they might push the envelope at first, but once it was no longer a novelty, then they sort of just treated it like pen and paper or whatever. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about that. But, you know, digital communication, there's a benefit that you can say to them, you know, we can see all of this and we can track it and see who put it and when they wrote it and all that. So, so hopefully that part is helpful. Now I'm gonna switch accounts again. I'm gonna go back to the teacher view and we're gonna go over to the classwork. And I'm just gonna show you a few more things and then you'll have a chance to ask um, questions because this is sort of the basics of setting up Google Classroom. So in the classwork tab, um, really the main feature of this is this create button. The create button is where everything gets started. So when you click on create, you have a lot of options here. You can create an assignment. You can create a quiz assignment. You can create a question, which is a different type of assignment. You can create a material. So something that maybe the students aren't necessarily responsible to complete, but something that they need uh, to access. Uh, you can reuse a post from another classroom. That's something that I do often if I teach the same PD over and over. I don't wanna recreate that assignment. I can just reuse a post, which is pretty handy. And then lastly, sort of a new feature to Classroom is I can create a topic. I really like the topic feature because what it does is it organizes your classwork tab. Um, previously, all of the assignments just sort of built up chronologically. They just stacked up. So if a student was absent for a few days, they would have to sort of search through that. I would be looking for things and I'd be trying to remember, did I assign this before that or after that? Um, and it became very confusing. So I typically now organize my classwork into topics. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the Create button, click on Topic. And I'm going to create a topic called ongoing resources, because that's something that a lot of teachers might have. They might have links to say the textbook or uh, syllabus, depending on the grade level. Um, you know, anything that might be sort of an ongoing resource that students need to go back to time and time again. I often keep my ongoing resources at the top of my classwork tab, and I'll show you how to arrange those. The thing I like about topics is it also creates an outline over here on the left. So I can look at all topics or I can click on the topics as I go. So I'll show you what this looks like. If I click create topic, 
I'm going to create a topic called um, bell work. That's a topic that I had in my classroom when I was teaching. So my students knew every day to come in to um, class, to log into classroom, and right away to go to that bell work topic. So I know that I want my ongoing resources to be at the top and my bell work to be below that. So I'm going to click and drag this up. So that's a nice new feature of classroom. You can just click and drag to um, organize your classroom. Uh, what else might I want to have? I'm going to create a topic called um, classwork. So those might be class assignments. And I want that to be below the bell work. So I'm going to click and drag that down. So let's see what this might look like. Um, so let's see, I'm going to create, uh, we'll try to create a material first. So let's say that you want to post a material in your ongoing resources, something that students are going to need to access quite often. So you click on create, click on material. Again, you can decide. Do you, are you posting this material for one or more classes? Maybe you want to post it for all of your classes or maybe just one. Maybe this is a material for all students. Maybe this is a material just for students who are working on something like a particular skill or something. So I'm going to title this uh, syllabus. When I was a high school teacher, I would keep my syllabus in the ongoing um, materials or ongoing resources section. You could add a description if you wanted to. The most important um, piece here is to choose the topic. Where do you want this um, particular material to go? I want this to go into ongoing resources. Now I need to decide, is this something that's downloaded? Is it something that's on my drive? Is it a video from YouTube? Or is it a link to something? So I'm going to just click on drive and I'm going to say that this slideshow, we're going to pretend that this is a syllabus, that I want that to be um, attached to this material. So it's a material, it's called syllabus, it's going in the ongoing resources and I've had my attachment right here. And I'm going to go ahead and post that. So I don't... <laughs> It says, I don't have permission to attach this. This was created by one of my colleagues. I don't own this particular um, copy. So Google is so smart that it's saying, you know what? You don't have permission to attach something you don't own. Do you want to copy it? So I'm going to say, yes, please create a copy of this for me. So that way I'm not messing with the version that my um, colleague shared with me. So now you can see under ongoing resources, syllabus, and it has that icon that um, denotes that it's a material. If I somehow made a mistake here, I can click on the three dots menu. Recently, I've heard people calling this the snowman menu. I, I, um, that's a new one to me. And I can edit it, I can delete it, or I can copy it. So if you realize, oh, I forgot to add something else to this, you can click edit. Um, maybe you wanted to add three materials to your to this particular material or three links or something you can click edit to change that or you can delete it if you don't need it anymore so in bell work you might um, you might put an assignment that's a question assignment so if you click create question so let's say um, I'm gonna title this um, I used to title it by the day. I don't typically put the long question in the sort of title section here, only because um, only because it, it comes out in the grade book, and I'll show you that. So I'm gonna put bell work 1114, and then I'm gonna put the question here. So tell me one thing you learned about um, our topic. 
yesterday. So maybe you're starting class with um, a recall question for students. When you ask a question or create an assignment or a quiz assignment, you have the option to assign points. So you can either make it ungraded or you can assign points. So you could say, you know, maybe all bell work is worth one point, or maybe if you're using it as a formative assessment, it's ungraded. You can decide to put a due date on any assignment. You can actually choose a date and a time. I, um, I would do this with caution. I think it's great to have due dates, but what Google does, um, Google's just a machine, it's a computer. So what it does is it will send a reminder uh, a day before that assignment is due. If the student turns something in after the due date, it's going to mark that assignment as late. It doesn't do anything to the assignment, it just puts, um, it gives the student a notification like you're turning this in late. So think about, you know, do you want the student to know that? When I was a teacher in high school, um, if I had students turn things in after the fact and they got that message, I would inevitably get an email from them and say, Miss, I just turned this in, is that okay? Google says it's late. It would create a lot of anxiety um, that I didn't want to create. So if you're going to use the, date, the due date and time, just be aware that it does send out notifications and it uses the time if you just select a day, it uses the time as midnight. So we don't necessarily want our students getting reminders, especially if they keep their phone near their bed. We don't want them getting reminders at midnight from Google Classroom. Um, that wouldn't be an advisable practice. And then we have to decide which topic this is gonna go under. So I'm gonna say that this is gonna go under bell work. I can decide whether I want this um, question to be a short answer or multiple choice. If you choose multiple choice, you can put the options there. So you can, you know, actually ask a quick, um, quick check multiple choice question and see um, how students are doing. This particular one would be a short answer. I'm not going to do a due date. I'm going to do the bell work. Students can reply to each other if you want. So you could turn that on or off and you can set it that students can edit the answer or not. So um, I think that when people are new to Google Classroom, um, you should try all of these things. Test it out. Learn with your students and say, oh, gee, you know, that didn't really work out the way I posted at this time. This is new to all of us. So, um, you know, next time I'll remember to do this setting differently. So I can now, again, I can either ask the question now, I can schedule it for a later time, or I can save it as a draft. So I'm going to click ask and then I'm going to go over to my other account here. There we go. And it already says the stream was updated. Do I want to show that? So now you can see that the teacher, because I'm a student in this classroom, the teacher posted that welcome and I answered it. The teacher posted a new material and the teacher posted a new question. So the student can get to those materials by clicking here. So I can click on that. I can see the syllabus that the teacher posted. Or I can go into the classwork tab. So as the student, I can find things in the stream or I can find it in the classwork under the appropriate topic. Just refresh that. There we go, because it had only shown one topic so far. Because I have Google Classroom on my phone, I keep getting notifications that things are um, being posted. So I can, I've already opened the syllabus, I can click on my bell work here. And here's the question. Tell me one thing you learned about our topic yesterday. So in order to answer this, the student has to click view the question. And this is what it looks like to students. So they see the title of the assignment, they see who posted it and when, they see the question. They can either, so there's multiple ways they can respond to this. They can add a class comment about the question, but that won't make the assignment complete. That's sort of just like where they would ask a clarifying question. Like, I don't understand. Can you help me understand how to answer this? Or if they're ready to answer the topic, 
they type their answer in over here. So they could say yesterday, I learned that and finish that. The other thing that they can do is add a private comment. So if they're really confused or they have a question that they don't want everyone to see, they can add a private comment. So um, sometimes I've had teachers, even when doing PD, they'll turn the assignment in here, but they'll send me a private message there just looking for some clarification on what they were supposed to do or how to find certain materials. So the cool thing about the assignment here is that students can't see each other's work until they turn in their own work. And that's um, a function of classroom, so that uh, sometimes it's nice for them to be able to see each other's work, but in this question feature, they can't see each other's, each other's work till they turn their own in. So then I would click turn in. And now I could click see classmate answers. So if there were other classmates here, their answers would be here and I would have the option to reply to them. So I'm going to show you what this looks like from the teacher view. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that bell work 1114 assignment. The teacher and student view look very similar. It's just that the teacher and student have different functions that they can do, of course. So I'm going to click on the bell work 1114. I can see that one person turned it in and zero people are waiting to turn it in. So it's, it's nice, I can see right away whether it's worth me opening this. Um, you know, maybe nobody's turned it in yet. So if I click view question, <clears throat> it's gonna show me all of the students down the left side. So I only have one student right now. And it's gonna show me their work. So I can then click reply here and everybody can see what the teacher says to the student. Because this is ungraded, it doesn't give me an option, but if this was graded, I could mark a grade right here, and then I could click return. So if the teacher replied and said, that's great, and you know, adds some additional comment, the teacher can then post that and then the student will be able to see it. Again, if it were graded, you'd click return and the student would get a grade back. So going back to the classroom and back to the classwork tab, there are other types of assignments you can do. You can create an actual assignment where you might attach a document. Um, you can also create a quiz assignment which is using Google Forms. Uh, good question, Lisa. So do the other students see your reply? So on a question assignment, I believe that they do. You know what? Let's see. Let's take a look at that. That's a good question because I haven't used this as a teacher in a while. So I believe that on a question assignment, other students would see the teacher's reply to the student. Um, on an assignment, and I can show you that really quickly. Let's go to the classwork tab. We're going to create an assignment. Got it. I'm going to call this assignment um, Mapping Worksheet. And I'm going to say, please follow these directions and I, you know you'd put your directions there you would decide which classes this is for which students this is for we're going to give it a hundred points we're going to give it a due date of tomorrow um, we're going to give it a topic of classwork because that's where we want it to end up and i'm going to go ahead and um attach something. Let me see. I'm going to attach this classroom challenge. Assuming that 
you know, it's the assignment that you want the student to do. Like maybe it's a graphic organizer or maybe it's a sheet of questions. So the cool thing about doing an assignment, and then we'll, I'll show you what it looks like um, as far as teachers commenting. The cool thing about doing an assignment when you attach a document. So if you're creating something that you want students to do, um, it gives you options. On that attachment, students can just view the file. So maybe you're just giving them a set of directions you want them to view, and then they're going to do the assignment um, by typing in an answer, you know, in classroom. Um, maybe you just want them to view it as um, information that they're going to talk about with another student. Maybe you want the students to edit the file, but if you click students can edit file, all the students are working in the same document. So you'd have to be really sure that you want all students to be working in the same document. Or, and this is my favorite, you make a copy for each student. So this is just a genius feature where if you created a graphic organizer and each student was gonna work independently, you would just click make a copy for each student and it does that. So I'm gonna click, go ahead and assign this. And we'll go over to the student view. And then I'll turn your sound on so that you guys will be able to ask some questions in just a minute. And we can chat a little bit. Um, so it tells me, now I'm in the student view and the stream tells me that the teacher posted a new assignment called mapping worksheet. I'm gonna go over to the classwork. And I'm going to refresh this because it's live. The stream always refreshes, but the classwork tab doesn't refresh unless you click refresh. So under the classwork topic, I can see the mapping worksheet. So this is, this is one of the reasons that I love that make a copy for each student feature. What it does is it renames the document with the name, the original name of the document, but it puts the student's name before that. So there's no chance of, um, you know, you not knowing what belongs to whom. So I love that feature. So as the student, I'm going to click on view assignment. And this tells me it's mapping worksheet. Please follow these directions. Again, I can add a class comment to talk about this. I can add a private comment to the teacher. I can click on the assignment and see what that is. So let's say it's Google Classroom Challenge and it's asking me to do all of these things. As the student, let's say that this worksheet that the teacher gave me was uh, just a direction sheet or let's say a writing prompt or um, some type of math word problem or something like that, but it's up to me to create the response to that. I can click, as the student, I can click add or create, and I can create a new doc, new slide, new sheet, or new drawing right from here, or I can add something that I've already created. So if I've been working on an essay and it's in my Google Drive, I can choose to add that or I can create a new one. I'm going to create a Google Doc and it calls it mapping worksheet because that's the name of the assignment. So I'm just going to type in here, this is my assignment. Okay, so that's all ready. I finished the assignment. I'm going to close it and now I'm going to click turn in. So my teacher is going to be able to see this that they sent me and this that I created. Turn in. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to classwork. I can see the mapping worksheet assignment. I can see that one person has turned it in. So I'm gonna view that assignment. So it looks a little bit different this time because this is now a graded assignment with 100 points. So this is where I can post the grade. And then it's going to show me uh, like a little block for each student. And it's going to tell me how many attachments are attached to that assignment. So I can click on those attachments. And it sort of opens this um, doc, uh, sort of document viewer for me. 
So it's, this is like a new uh, view as far as classroom is concerned. So I can see the original um, document that I sent out to the student. I can see their work if I click on the next one here. So what I love about this is um, there's several options here to communicate with the student. First, I can see all the files. So that's the student communicating with me. I can click on this. I can put the grade here because I'm now just in the window of this student's work. And then I can add private comments here. So I can say 100, um, you met all of the criteria for the project. Google has a new uh, rubric feature that's in beta and Worcester has access to it. Um, it's a little bit more advanced, but I could always help you through that. I'm going to post the comment. So that just posts the comment. It does not return the grade. You don't return the grade until you click return. So sometimes um, teachers like to use this for drafting. So for example, a student might turn in a draft and the teacher can post private comments and say, you know, please fix X, Y, and Z on these particular um, points in the, in the work. If you're familiar with Google Docs, you'll know that I could um, highlight a word. And when I highlight a word in a document, this little add a comment button pops up. So I could say, please check your spelling. And pretend that that word is spelled wrong and click comment. So the student can see my comment here in classroom, but if the student opened the document, they would also be able to see my comment here. If this assignment is complete, the student did great, they get a grade, 85, 90, 100, whatever it is, I can click return. Because that was a private comment, um, that's the comment bank, it's a little bit, it's, it's a little bit, um, a little bit of work to set up. Um, because that was a private comment, only the student will see that. So let's click over there. And I'm in the student view. And I'm going to click on view assignment. And I can see that I got a 100 out of 100. And I can see the private comments right there. So there's the option to do the class comment and the private comment. So Lisa, your question about when you do it as a um, question assignment, if other students can see the teacher's reply to the question, um, I believe that they can. I'm doing a PD right now, um, which is a podcast discussion. So we're listening to a different episode of a podcast every week and then commenting. Um, when I'm in this view, Actually, I'm going to go over to that classroom for a quick second. Um, I'm going to go to the classwork. I'm going to click on this assignment. So now I'm viewing the question. So these, this was, they had questions to answer. Some people answered by video. Uh, yes, so I can see everybody can see the replies here. So that was a very long answer to your question. I apologize, but um, I wanted you to uh, get the sense of what that looked like. So uh, I am going to pause recording here.